Kangana Sen Sharma has grown up with cinema. Her mother is the actor filmmaker Aparna Sen. Her grandfather Chidananda Das Gupta was a co-founder of the Calcutta Film Society along with Satyajit Ray. Kangana made her acting debut at 4. Won her first national award for Mr. and Mrs. Iyer when she was 23. and directed her first feature film a death in the tanch at 36 kokona flits seamlessly between languages formats sensibilities playing with equal conviction a witch in a dying a schizophrenic in 15 park avenue and the delicious plot dolly in dolly kitty or ho chamak pe sitare she brings a keen intelligence and empathy to her characters which is what makes her a first mover Kangana, welcome to First Movers in Film, empowered by Bumble, a social networking app where women make the first move. Critical. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Well, thanks for having me. Kangana, one of the many things I find amazing about you, I find many things amazing about you, but one of the things is that you're a national award-winning actor who actually didn't want to be an actor, uh, who said constantly that she did it for a lark. um you know of course you've been doing it you started out as a child actor in bengali cinema but you know you you weren't focused in being an actor you said you were very shy as a kid and yet here you are a really really fine actor how has this happened did you just learn on the job is it just in the dna you know uh, anupama now so when i hear people saying that back uh, what i used to say i mean i sound so kind of you know uh, privileged and elite and sheltered that i'm embarrassed i was always so painfully shy that uh, i never thought that i would really you know i didn't really like to be looked at i preferred looking at other people and i got lucky that i was um offered my first few films just like that you know i was offered and i remember the first film that i did which was uh, you know lovely people lovely director lovely people but it was really like a, a copy of a b grade hollywood film but it did very well so i had actually thought i'll just do it and nobody will ever watch it nobody will ever know and it's fine you know and then i came back and it did really well and i got some you know state awards and i got some other offers then jitkon told me to do his film my mother said to mr and mrs ayer i tried to say no you know I told my mother, no, no, you must take a South Indian person and take a Tamilian, and you shouldn't take me. But she sent me off to Madras to do research, and then I was trapped. <laughs> so I think also because you know the momentum of it at that time, it just took off so fast that because I didn't have a plan B, it was easier to go with this, go with the flow. And I've always been that kind of person, actually. But you figured out acting as you did it. you know that i think what happened was that i i i am pretty much and i probably was even then pretty an intuitive actor and on the job then i learned other technical things i guess so i was always a very um empathetic child and i was very used to inhabiting other worlds especially in books and films and other stories i would cry easily and even now i can cry at like a well need ad you know i'm very like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then from this award winning actor you become an acclaimed director i i remember this interview you did before a death in the gunge and you said you were terrified when you first started making that film yeah. what were you terrified of and how did you deal with that fear <laughs> okay well firstly i didn't have any technical knowledge i had no technical expertise i had never studied uh, filmmaking i meant right. to but it didn't quite work out so um i was scared that everybody would see through me and that i would take the wrong decisions and that everything would go wrong and i would not know what to do so i was scared about that and because i was so scared i think i was really well prepared <laughs> i was really well prepared and i feel like i was the best version of me that i have been since or before through the shoot you were calling your mom often yeah. and i wish i could have eavesdrop in those conversations what did you ask her what advice did she give you i would speak to her often like one of the things that you know she really helped me and hopefully will help other people is that uh, i was so scared i mean still terrified because you know some technical uh, information i cannot retain even if you tell me two three times i will forget it and again and again i have to find out the same like those kind of things which i don't really have any I mean, I I know that they're meaningful and significant, but I find it hard to retain. Like, for example, the lenses, or you know, like those kind of things, I find it difficult. So I remember telling my mom, like, how will like if I 
have to say that it has to be this lens and has to look like, you know, those kind of things I was very scared of, like what camera I should use, right. and what camera should be used in the film, what are its features and things like that. I was scared. And I remember she said that, you know, um, it doesn't matter because, uh, I mean, now that you don't know, it doesn't matter because you are hiring HODs who have this expertise. And as long as you're able to explain your frame, so she showed my DOP was so fantastic. He's actually worked with me, my mother and my grandfather, all as directors. Yeah. And he did my first film as an actor, as a grown up. He was the first DOP anyway. And he has a lot of experience. So I would actually, my mom would say, just describe the shot. So I would say that, and it was actually written into the screenplay. I would say that, you know, um, this is in the background. I can't see this, that very clearly. I can only see till here. And this has to be like this. And the light has to be like this. So I had actually imagined the whole film in my head completely. Like I could give a full narration even before the script was written. I could actually talk it through because the whole thing already existed in my head. So that really helped. <laughs> you know, Pokhara, you know that I'm a big fan of A Death in the Gunch. And, and one of the scenes that really stayed with me um, was Mimi's seduction of Shutu. Yay! Um, such, a, such a lovely scene. And of course, she's playing with him uh, uh, and using him. And, and she pushes him into that chair. And what I loved was that all we see is the chair rocking. And then there's that piece of paper that sort of becomes dislodged, right? Yeah and just falls in front and it just said everything. I mean, it said so much more than just a piece of paper being dislodged from a chair. How did you find that image? How did you stage that sequence? Firstly, that was again, those details were written into the script way before even prep. Um, I think it was born out of a childhood memory and a lot of Death in the Gun is childhood memory for me because I remember sitting at the dining table as a kid and our dining table was a round one which used to be a little lopsided and my dad would keep holding up newspapers and putting it under the leg of it. And I remember this one time that I was, I was supposed to be eating, I think, my carrots or my vegetables and I didn't want to eat it. So I would just bring it to my mouth and while everyone's chatting, just throw slowly throw it under the table. <laughs> okay. And so, and then the table started shaking. And then my dad said, I have to put the newspaper adjusted. And he came with his newspaper and that leg was under my seat and he came to fix it. And he just stopped because there was a neat little pile of carrots under my chair. So I'm standing in the kitchen crying and eating a carrot. And you know, this memory somewhere is very strong in my head. Um, and it came to me unbidden you know it's not like I had planned it and thought it it came to me unbidden and tied up with that memory somehow of how the whole thing fell apart <laughs> because of this thing and in a way Shutu also slowly falls apart because you know this whole world becomes rocky and lopsided soon after this it's a lovely scene it's a lovely scene Kodana, tell me what's the first move that you've made in your professional life that you think has enabled you to be where you are so I've actually not uh, made the first move so much in my professional life. But uh, I uh, don't actually make the first move so much consciously. But, you know, I did write the script. I did direct the film. I mean, yeah, I, I was just going to say, directing a film, that's pretty big. Yeah, and I do end up kind of doing these kind of roles, which I'm just like, I, you know, that one of my friends says that, you know, you, uh, uh, you operate out of fear, but your decision making is out of courage. Because I, it seems to me that even though I'm scared, I'll, you know, I've taken something on and I'm just like, why, why have I done this? Why have I put myself in this position? You know, whether it's like having a child, getting divorced, now having a puppy, shifting homes. I mean, sometimes I've just taken these things on and I'm myself amazed. And I think it's better not to think about it too much because once you then you say that I'm going to do it, then somehow, you know, you make it happen or things fall into place. And uh, you got to make it happen. You know, what choice do you have, really, <laughs> after your yeah. Correct, correct. You know, um, Tokna, when I was researching for this interview, I came across an interview you had done in 2013, in which um, the interviewer is asking you this incredibly ridiculous question. Um, uh, he or she says to you that, um, you know, you're not uh, good looking in the conventional Bengali way like your mother is. And how has that affected you? Yeah. And I loved your response. You said, I'm very confident and personally, I think I'm quite good looking. I loved it. <laughs> it was just yeah. fantastic. You know, uh, how, how do women come to that level of confidence? You know, how do you cultivate it in yourself? You know, I think that I was very lucky in the way that I was brought up. My, my parents and my upbringing were basically pretty unconventional. 
so i uh, became very okay with being different and in fact that is my safe space you know uh, like and i naturally tend to do that in any case you know uh, uh, i'm comfortable with that i'm okay to be a little different i'm okay to be an outsider i'm okay to observe and in fact that's my comfort zone so that helped hugely and you know it's not like the other thing i realize it's not like i feel like i'm good looking all the time you know but you know occasionally i feel attractive and i feel like that's enough and i find that it's it's uh, remarkable how people feel so um um confident in remarking on a woman's appearance so much so i always make it a point to say it back to the man especially like yeah. oh uh, put on kiya na or whatever you lost so much and you know uh, oh healthy so i always say you know may very often like if a man tells me also like you know you are oh you're looking so nice i'll all oh you're looking so lovely yourself i always say that because i just wanted to be like look this has to be equal <laughs> if you're going to you know even in a nice way if you're saying then i want going to say you know i remember yeah. once a ma- like i think some actor um, i remember he kissed my hands like sweetly in public nothing creepy and yeah. i was so um uncomfortable with this stereotypical female male situation i kissed his hands back and i myself i'm appalled by myself i'm appalled by myself because i'm just like why did i do that what he does that <laughs> just and then i sometimes i'm strange and it's okay <laughs> It's okay. Tell me, Kogra, you've worked. You know, you are of course seen as as you know whatever the the different space actor, the the you know more serious actor. But you, it's not like you haven't done big mainstream movies, right? And very successful ones. Page three was a big hit. Uh, you you've been Ranbir Kapoor's heroine. Did none of that seduce you in any way? How interesting. um you know when those kind of things happened it was not like it was uh, i am now doing something mainstream i think for those studios it was their alternative content so it you know like for dharma wake up say it is their alternative content or for like i don't know like even for yashraj ajana chale is their alternative content almost you know i i never even got that kind of fame and stardom which is um where people are mobbing you or like you know their you know uh, whatever the heights of stardom that you hear about i never it's not like i ever got a taste of that and i was like oh, this is very nice and i want this <laughs> i was never i mean i think my own personality in any case is not like that and it's not right. like that ever happened to me either you know right. uh, so it's not like i ever it's like you know how you when like you taste a sweet and you're like oh this is yummy and now it's going to be on my order like sometimes i'm scared to try new sweet things because i'm like if i like this then i'll have to keep ordering it so yeah. in a similar way i feel like i actually never i i've never really experienced that i've yeah. never really craved it and i've never really experienced it either tell me what are the first moves that you would advise women to make in their lives to take charge of their lives and sort of make a difference well the first thing they have to do is earn their own money because as soon as you earn your own money you uh, have many more choices yeah. so that's the first thing you have to do it doesn't matter if your husband is supportive or if you need to support your husband or if you're not married or you know you're for your parents or if you're already loaded you need to anyway earn money yeah yeah um what are the things you wish you knew when you started your career then i'm going to be able to hack it <laughs> um in the sense not in terms of success but i remember my first couple of films i was really unhappy <laughs> i was really unhappy because i was just like oh ho oh, why have they dressed me like this why are they doing this like this why does the decor look like this who <laughs> what are these lines you know and but i wouldn't change anything because it really helped me to become detached it really yeah. helped me to learn to concentrate in the midst of chaos on only myself and my work you know so it, that was great What are some of the things that people should stop telling women? So one thing we already said was, you know, uh, commenting on anybody else's personal appearance. I think is just like you know, unnecessary, uh, and especially if it's unsolicited. Um, the other thing is, of course, like when you're getting married or when you're having a child. Um, that's definitely one um, which I don't face so much, but I know that I have friends who do. Um, what else should Oh how do you balance your career and your family life they should just stop yeah. asking women that really yeah because they don't really ask men how they're doing that so i think they can stop asking women 
what are the things that you're tired of hearing because of your gender <laughs> <laughs> maybe the put on kya hai maybe that <laughs> maybe that yeah ja ha huh, about your uh, uh, body that's true about your body people do and you know i'm able to dismiss it so easily so i forget my hair is the other thing where i a little bit felt like that because you know the hair I actually have very curly and frizzy hair, and I feel like really? that gets yeah. And recently, I've started to put that up on my social media. So the lockdown really helped me to embrace my own hair because just stop going to the salon. Uh, of course, for you, for you, I have a little, you know. But uh, otherwise, I think that that is something which actually doesn't get enough representation either because there is a default of you know we know there is a default of fair, but there is also a default of straight hair. There are very there's very few representation of like you know natural hair or curly yeah. hair and that's really my next thing like i feel like it's my duty i feel like hair is really political like even if you see michelle obama the whole time she was in the white house she actually had white woman hair she never had like traditional hair traditional black hair or you know uh, natural hair at all and i think only now post white house she started to do that a little bit and what are the tips that you would give kamra to an aspiring actors like what are some what what's some of the most practical stuff that you've picked up in all these years that would perhaps help them okay so i can think of a few things off hand uh, like right now one is to visit as many sets as possible oh and the most important thing actor or otherwise i feel it's very important not to base all of your happiness on one person or one thing like you know oh if i'm an actor then i'm going to be happy or if i if so and so loves me i'll be happy or if i get that job i'll be happy because you know then you're you have to like identify and spread it out <laughs> yeah spread out the happiness givers thank you so much thank you anupama bumble connects people across dating friendship and professional networking no matter the type of relationship women make the first move on bumble